Hey there. Thank you for making it this far. And I hope you understood the NumPy crash course in the previous video. If there is anything you didn't understand, don't hesitate to leave your confusion, your troubles as comments on the video. And um, I promise to reply as soon as possible to help you get out of your problems, okay? So in this particular section, we are going to deal with videos. I'm going to show you how to capture images with your video camera. Okay, so I'm going to start, write a code and I will explain to you each line along the way. So I'll start with the usual CV2 import. Okay, and I'll say cap is equal to CV2 dot video capture. Now this video capture returns an object that represents a camera on your computer that you want to use to um, capture video. Let me actually call this camera. Okay. And then it takes an index that indicates which camera on your computer you want to use to capture the video. If you specify zero, then it means if you use the default camera on your computer. For instance, on my MacBook, I have only one camera, which is the front facing camera. Okay. But if I had other cameras, whether USB or any other type of camera, wireless cameras also connected to my computer, then I have to specify another index like one, two, three, four, depending on how many cameras I have on my computer and which one I want to access. But because I have only one camera, I will leave it at zero. Okay. And then over here, I'll say I'll be in an infinite loop. Okay, so I'm going to loop forever and I'll say return and um, I'll say frame is equal to camera dot read. This is the interesting part. So essentially, a video is just a series of images that is played over time. When you sit and watch a movie for one hour, you are actually watching hundreds of thousands of of images that are played over time to create the illusion of motion pictures and that is where a video gets that name is a motion picture it's just a series of pictures that are that are being swapped out quickly to deceive your eye and your brain to think of them as a video okay but it's actually a series of pictures you are using and what makes it beautiful is that a video is actually made up of a stream of images and uh, a stream of audio. And the beautiful part is the synchronization between the audio stream and the stream of images such that you can see people's lips match what you hear on the audio stream. And it creates the, the impression of, I mean, the motion picture when you actually see people talking. But in actual sense, they are just images, a stream of images and um, a stream of audio that has been synchronized to work together at the same time. So when you when you call camera dot read, you are telling your camera to capture pictures at regular intervals. Okay, and in a video, how many images are shown to you in a second is called the frame rate. So if you watch a video of um, with a frame rate of 30 frames per second, what it means is that in a second, you see 30 pictures that are swapped or that are changed quickly. Okay. If it is 60, then your video plays faster. So basically you are, you are saying forever. This while true is saying forever, the camera should keep capturing pictures and then it will store the picture in this frame variable. And um, it is just like the image we read on the file or from a URL. And it is also a NumPy array. It is just a picture, okay? And then this return variable is a Boolean that tells you whether the caption of the frame was successful or not. So if you like, you can check if um, return is true before you can even proceed to process the image. But 
for all this while that I have used OpenCV, I mean, it has always always worked for me. And this is not a mission critical application, so I'm not going to check for that. Okay, right. So I have um, my frame. So what do I want to do? I want to show it as an image. So I'll say I am show, and I'll give the window a name of video, and I'm going to show the frame. Okay. And like always we need to wait for a key press but because this is a video we want it to capture continuously until we press a key so this time around i am interested in knowing which key the user presses on the keyboard so i'll say key is equal to cv2 um dot wait key let's say for a second and I will say for a micro scan and I will say if key and 0x ff is equal to the odd of q then I would break out of the for loop so then I want the video to stop and once the video stops I'm going to come to this part of my code and I'll say CV, I will release the camera. Okay, the reason you need to release it is to make the camera accessible for other applications that need it. Otherwise, you end your program and other programs cannot make use of the camera on your computer. Then now I can say CV to destroy all windows. Now, let me explain to you what is happening on line 8. And line 9 on line 8 I am saying I am interested in knowing which key the user pressed okay so I store that key and it is going to come as an integer every key on the keyboard is represented as an integer depending on the ASCII character that is displayed when you press it and then I'll say if key and I'm doing a bitwise and with um, 255 in hexadecimal and the reason I'm doing that is my computer is a 64 bit computer and um, I am I am I am sure that your computer will be a 64 bit computer as well because I mean this time around it is hard to find 32 bit computers but if your computer happens to be a 32 bit computer then you just have to get rid of this and this code is going to work perfectly for you otherwise you have to do this and the reason is this bitwise and here is going to make sure that the high order bits in the key that was pressed is actually what to be compared to this odd q this odd function okay this odd if you hover your mouse over it it tells you that it returns the integer ordinal of a one character string so it, it tells you which integer is used to represent that character so basically what I'm doing is since key is an integer I am checking if that integer is equal to the integer that represents Q on my keyboard and if that is true I want to stop capturing the video I'll release my camera and I'll destroy every window so let's come in here and run this and you can see I don't have um, a very good lightning in the place where I'm recording the videos but this is me and um, I am capturing the video using the short code that we wrote and so just so you don't get confused the voice I am recording is not going to be part of the video. My camera is only capturing pictures, okay? Pictures, pictures, pictures. It's capturing a lot of them in a second and it's playing them over time. So it creates the illusion of a video, okay? So I'm going to press Q on the keyboard and this window is going to go away and it will release the camera for other applications to use it and it is also Going to destroy the window that is created so i'm moving the video screen here and then i'll put the code over here and you can see that with yet um 13 lines of code you are able to start capturing videos using OpenCV. so i'll press q and once i did that the video um, is gone my camera has been released and it is as simple as it is so if you don't understand anything leave your 
questions as comment on the video and i promise to answer as soon as possible thank you for watching and see you in the next video